Hi there, it's JJ, and I'm going to be showing you today how to set up a Armor 3 server um, without using any other software. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to, this is a brand new VPS, so we're going to set up Chrome, uh, because who wants to use Microsoft Internet Explorer, am I right? So once we've got that all set up and set it as the default browser, um, we're going to install our first bit of software, which is 7-Zip. Now we're not actually going to use that during this tutorial, uh, but it can be really useful for uh, unzipping uh, mission files and stuff like that. So we're going to download that and install it. Next up we're going to install Notepad++. This is really good for editing uh, SQF files. And you can also get some really good plugins that will do syntax highlighting and uh, auto completion and stuff like that. I'm running a 64 bit version of Windows, so I'm going to install the 64 bit version of Notepad. Once that's installed, I am now going to install Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable. Now we're going to need a couple of these for Armor 3 to run, as well as some of the other software that we're going to be installing uh, in other videos. So first of all, we're going to install Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable 2012. Um, for some reason, my VPS is in Italian, so I have to change to English, but you probably won't have to do that. Um, and I'm going to install both the 64-bit and the 32-bit. Uh, versions of the software. For some of the software that we're going to be using is 64-bit and some of it is 32-bit. So going ahead and installing the 32-bit or the x86 and then the 64-bit which is the x64. Now that we've installed the 2012 version we're going to install 2013. And once again, we're going to install both the 64-bit and the 32-bit versions of this software. And then finally, we're going to install Visual C++ 2015. And of course, we're going to download both 64 and 32 bit versions of the software. Once those are done, we are going to install DirectX. Now this is required to run Armor 3. So we're going to go to the DirectX website, which is the Microsoft website, and download that. Now this does take a very, very long time to install. Uh, so I've sped up the video by a thousand times for you. So once that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to Google Steam CMD and we're going to go to the Valve uh, developer website. And what we're going to do is we're going to download Steam CMD uh, from their website. We're going to leave that there and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up some directories. So in the C, uh, on the C disk, we're going to make a new folder and we're going to call it apps. And inside that folder, we're going to make another folder called Steam. 
And then inside that Steam directory, we are going to put the Steam CMD executable. So open the zipped folder and drag Steam CMD dot uh, exe or dot command into the uh, new folder. Now make another directory, going to call it armor 3 under the C root directory again. Make another folder within that, call it A3 master. And another folder called A3 files. Now we're going to go back to the apps steam directory and we're going to run CM, steam cmd. That's going to download a load of files that it needs to run itself. And once it's done that, it's going to give you a login prompt. So it's going to say Steam and then there's going to be a little bracket. And what you need to type is login and your username. It's going to offer you the password and you need to enter your password here. It won't show your password for a privacy, uh, privacy policy, but... Uh, It'll be typing in. And then if you've got Steam Guard enabled, you're going to need to enter your Steam Guard code to let yourself log in. It's a good idea to set up a separate Steam account just for this, and you don't need Armor 3 to run the Armor 3 server. Now you've done that, you're going to be presented with the Steam uh, command line again, and you're going to put force install directory C Armor 3 A3 Master, and this just tells Steam CMD where to download your files for the Armor 3 server. Press Enter, and now you're going to actually download the files. So you're going to use app update, and then you need to enter 233. 780 and the word validate. This tells Steam to update the app uh, with this ID and to validate the files that it is downloaded. Now this does take a while depending on your internet connection so I'm going to speed up the video again. Now you can go to um, you can go to C Armor 3 a3 master and you can check that your files are downloaded. Once they have, you can type quit. Now that's done, you need to create a config file. So you're going to create a new rich text document uh, within your A3 master file. And you're going to call it server.cfg. Now, not always do you have the extensions enabled, the file extensions enabled. So if you need to go up to the top and enable those be invisible and then delete the RTF um, file extension. If you right click and edit with Notepad++, you can open the service config and here you can copy and paste the config that I've included in the description. If you then save this, Uh, you need to right click and create a shortcut on your Armour 3 server x64 and drag it to the desktop. What you're then going to do is right click on this, go to properties, and you can see in the target line, you need to space and you need to, within brackets, you need to type dash profiles equals C Armour 3 Armour 3 master. If you did decide to change the naming of the directories or where they were saved, you need to make sure you put where your Armour 3 server actually is. Then you need to put dash port 2302 or whichever port you want to use for your game server. You need to put dash config and server config. If you decided to change the name of that config, make sure you change that here. And then finally, you need to put world equals empty. Once you've done that, press apply and then OK. And then you want to double click on the shortcut that you placed on the desktop. We're going to run a test boot. Now, this first boot will take a little bit longer than normal. Um, if it takes a very, very long time, you might want to reconsider whether this is the right server to be running your, uh, your armor server on. 
Uh, but if it's just a test server or whatever, that shouldn't be much of an issue. The first boot will take longer, just bear that in mind. Once this white box is loaded, it will say dedicated host created, and now you need to wait for a couple more lines to appear. There you go, when it says host identity created, your server is now running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Armour 3 and you can see I've moved the server console to the other side. I'm going to direct connect and we're going to use the IP address of your server. Now, assuming that you have opened your port forwarding, I'm not going to show you how to do that and you've made sure your, the server is allowed through your firewall, you should now be able to connect. And you can see in the server console that there is lots of different text appearing. You can see your name. So within Armour, you're going to press uh, slash and you're going to type hashtag login and the admin password, which you defined within your config file. And once you've done that, you're going to do hash, uh, slash hashtag missions. And that will allow you to select a mission within the server itself. I'd recommend using one of Bohemia Interactive's pre-made missions to check the stability of your server. Um, but if you want to know how to run a specific mission uh, and especially Altus Life, I'm going to be doing a different video on how to do that very, very soon. So you can see it says uh, mission load, or mission red, sorry, uh, and then it'll take just a second for your game to load in. And you can see game started, we're good to go. So there we go, that's how you do it.